Imagine living your life in a calm, grounded manner. Many of us live an overstimulated, multitasking life, or have an agitated, hypervigilant brain, or a traumatized brain, a depressed brain, or an ADHD or autistic brain. All of these life patterns have habitual agitated patterns underneath their diagnostic categories. The brain often calls attention to these agitated states by making mistakes, losing focus, recycling worries, having outbursts of anger, or disrupted sleep. There are lots of signals to tell the person that their brain is overloaded. Many people listen to those signals and attempt to work their way out of those habitual stress patterns. Doing such activities as meditating, relaxation breathing, exercise, counseling, hypnosis, or self-medicating with pot or alcohol. These are all ways to reduce stress, but they require repetition continually throughout life. However, neurooptimal neurofeedback retraining efficiently builds a stable, robust, resilient nervous system that is long-lasting without requiring ongoing repetition. It helps maintain your life in the present tense where the brain is most agile and efficient. And because it uses your own brain to retrain yourself, neurooptimal neurofeedback naturally adapts to each person's mental issues without the necessity of adjusting to diagnostic categories. All that is asked of you is to have an open mind and trust that your own brain can heal itself. So how does neurooptimal neurofeedback do this? To answer this question, I'd like to use this image. So turbulence is the normal foundation for the nervous system. You have to have a certain amount of turbulence in order to, for the nervous system to be adaptive and accommodating, plastic and flexible. Sort of like muscle tone. Um, you couldn't stand up with a certain amount of tension in your muscles, otherwise you'd be a pile of bones. But clearly, shoulders up to your ears is pathological. Well, similarly, in the nervous system, this normal turbulence, as it builds higher and higher, it can get to a, a, a dangerous level. Um, it's sort of like water. As water gets heated up, it builds turbulence. It gets to a boiling point, then it goes into steam. In the nervous system, as this turbulence builds, it may get to this transition point and shoot up into insomnia or migraine headache or depression or some instabilities for bipolar. Um, you may have a flashback from a post-traumatic stress experience. So neurofeedback works in this area here, right at this transition point. And it alerts the brain that it's hovering at this high turbulent level. And so we put sensors on the scalp and it picks up the electrical activity of your brain, feeds it into a computer while you're listening to music through earbuds or speakers. When the computer software program detects a lot of turbulence, diffuse firings. Um, all of these are alerting the brain that there's a lot of turbulence here. It shuts the music off. The brain wants to hear the music, finds a less turbulent place, calms down, the music turns on. So it's alerting your nervous system that it's in a very high turbulent place and it needs to find a less turbulent place. By calming the seas, you bring down the possibility of migraines, post-traumatic stress flashbacks, um, and you can see where this might stabilize the system as well. That if you can keep these underlying turbulence calmer, that it will not build up to this transition point. So how, you might wonder, does the brain find this less turbulent place? You've had this agitation, this tension and stress for years and years, and it's not found a calm place yet. 
So how does it do that? I'd like you to imagine walking down a calm, peaceful neighborhood. White picket fences, green grass, children playing on the yard, a very comfortable scene. And then you hear a gunshot. Oh my God. Brings you, it's so out of place, it brings your attention back to present so that your brain can analyze whether it's dangerous or safe. If it's dangerous, you're out of there. If it's safe, you say, oh, phew, it wasn't aimed at me. And you relax. And it's just a normal response. Now that's a dramatic example of fight or flight, but the brain actually is doing this, assessing its uh, situation and changes in its environment constantly. When you're in a neurofeedback um, session, you're relaxed in a chair, you're listening to music, the only thing that changes in your environment is the interruption of the music. So your brain takes note and gradually your brain learns, which allows uh, the changes to remain long, long lasting. So when you're hooked up to the neurofeedback machine and you're listening to music that is interrupted, each time the computer detects stress or anxiety in your system, it does three things. It breaks up the escalation of the stress building upon itself so that it doesn't get to that boiling point and then shoot off into a migraine or depression or something just keeps breaking it off, keeps stopping it from building up. And then it resets you back into the present because your brain has to assess things. So it puts you into the present and it calms you, it relaxes you just because there's that reflex in the nervous system. It takes multiple training sessions to break long uh, habitual patterns. It's sort of like building muscle muscle bulk. Uh, it, you don't get strong in the first time you go to the gym. So it takes 15 to 20 times of this neurofeedback training to um, have really lasting results. But you'll see things change possibly in the first session, but usually between 8 and 10 sessions you'll see definite changes in um, your habitual patterns. So it's long-lasting. It builds resilience such that your system can adapt to change much more easily than it did before. Um, and it's drug-free, so there's no side effects. It does not take your personality away. Um, and it adjusts to individual coping styles because it's your own brain training itself. It's very gentle. It's seamless. You, some, you have to pay attention to how that brain is, is changing. It's good for any brain. Imagine the teachable moments you could have if you weren't recycling doubts, fears, anxieties. Imagine health without stress. It's possible. It's very possible.